the top swimmers in the world have come together in Iowa. And what a day it's been from the Tier Pro Series in Des Moines. The big stories today, the women's 100 freestyle, Hahi just out touching Manuel in a very close race, posting one of the fastest times in the world this year. And the women's 100 breaststroke, Lily King taking it away as she normally does with a 105.7 Molly Hannis close behind her for second. And the third one, Katie Ledecky in the women's 400 freestyle. And you guessed it, she ran away with it in a commanding lead. And this is Deck Pass Live, and I'm Elizabeth Beisel, and we are here at the Wellmark YMCI in the heart of Des Moines, Iowa. And we had a sold out crowd today. And I think one of the best things about tonight's session was that a lot of these swimmers got a taste for what they were going to experience at Omaha, Nebraska in a few months. Although the crowd isn't definitely isn't the same size of what they'll experience in Omaha, but they got the use of the feel of being able to perform in front of a sold out crowd. You're talking about Iowa, you know, what's up with swimming in Iowa? Well, let me tell you a little bit about Iowa swimming history. Back in 1968 and 1972, Mike Burton won Olympic gold medals, becoming the only American to ever go back to back in the men's 1500 freestyle at the Olympic Games. He was born right here in Des Moines and Mike Burton would go on to become a member of the International Swimming Hall of Fame. And speaking about some of the best swimmers in the world, we have Ali McHugh here with us today and she is by far one of the best swimmers in the country and also the world. And Ali, I'm gonna welcome you onto set right now. Ali, welcome. You came away with three wins last summer at the national championships. You had a very hard double tonight, probably the hardest out of anybody here on this pool deck. <laughs> yeah. You had a 200 fly, and then I think you said you had about three minutes? Yeah, I finished my warm down and had about three minutes to get up to the locks for the 400 freestyle, so that was interesting. Perfect, just yeah. no time for the recovery. Oh yeah, that's yeah. how to do it. You're in the jean jacket right yes, now. Yes, yes, <laughs> Which yes. is mine, this Alan. This is the new style, so yeah. She, yeah. she was lucky enough, or, and or nice enough, to come up from her massage table mm -hmm. and be on set tonight. Mm -hmm. um, Talk to me about that 200 fly and that 400 free double and the mental toughness that it takes to be able to do a double like that. Yeah, um, I've been training a lot more fly this year to help at the beginning of my IM. So um, I really like where my fly has been at lately. So that was really the key for tonight. And then the 400 freestyle, I knew it was going to hurt. So it was how bad was it going to hurt? And just keeping my head in it and just racing other people and just seeing what I can do after the 200 fly. So. So how bad did that corner for hurt? Um, yeah, it hurt a little bit. Yeah, the legs were a little dead at the end, but I mean, that's what you gotta do at meets like this. Just race as many things as you can just to get the experience and race long course in preparation right. for the summer. When you're in a heat with somebody like Katie Ledecky, do you have any idea as to how commanding of a lead she has. Can you see her at all underwater off your turns? Absolutely not. No, not at no, all. Not at no. all. So, yeah. yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of there. assume that she's out there, and most of the time she really is. So Yeah, I mean, that lead that Ledecky has coming into the wall at the finish of that corner free is, yeah. is pretty insane. And I feel like we, especially as swimmers, sometimes take for granted how amazing she is. Uh -huh. like, oh, another 359. Uh -huh. What else is new? Yeah. And, and it's just like, how cool is it for you to be able to race against somebody that's going to go down in history? In yeah, sport it's awesome. It's awesome to race her and just know her as a person. She's like the sweetest person ever. Like you can talk to her about absolutely anything. So it's really awesome to be able to race her and know her to be that type of person. So I think that just makes it so much better. For sure. We mm -hmm. were talking a little bit earlier about your training right now and you're at Wisconsin, but you're the only post grad. Yes. And so you're in the middle of college season right now mm -hmm. and they're tapering for conference and NCAAs yes. and you're sort of floating there yeah. uh, alone. Talk mm -hmm. me through how you stay mentally focused knowing that Olympic trials is only a few weeks or a few months away, excuse me. Yeah, I mean, this has been kind of in the toughest block in terms of mentality for me. Most of the year it's been, I've been training with the guys and we've been in a groove and doing it. Um, but this past two, three weeks, a little bit of tough, but I knew that I knew coming into these three weeks that this was the time where I had to be mentally okay. And then after this, my training will be okay. I'll be at the OTC with the national training camp and I'll be training with all of them. So I just really had to get through these two weeks. Um, and Keenan came out to visit and help me with my weight program. So that was really awesome having him there. So it actually went a lot better than I thought. So I'm just really excited to go to the OTC um, after this meet and train with the national teamers. So that'll be awesome. Yeah. Ali, you are a staple to American swimming right now. And I have so much respect for you because Thank you. you do what we call probably the hardest events. Yes. And mm -hmm. your your schedule at Olympic trials is going to be pretty, pretty hard. Yeah. Because it's the 400 free, the 400 IM, the 800 free, the mile. Mm -hmm. Does that affect your schedule at all when it comes to 
picking what you're going to race? Um, as of right now, those are the four events I'm going to swim. Um, it's nice to have the 400 IM on the first day, just because it's so different than what Worlds was last summer, because that was on the last day. So it'll be nice to have the 400 IM right out of the gate. Um, and then I'm not really sure. It'll be interesting to have to swim the 800 and the 1500 a few times. Never done that before to meet, so that'll definitely be an adjustment. But I think we'll be doing some things in the next few months to prepare for that. So. I think I'll be okay. Well, Ali, we will be cheering for you. Congratulations you. on your very tough double. You survived. Thank you. Go get warm and go Thank home and eat you. dinner. And good luck tomorrow. You have 4 a.m. tomorrow? And two free, yes. And two free. Mm -hmm. Another tough double for Ali McHugh, but she's used to it. Congratulations yeah. on your swimming tonight. Thank you. Yeah. And with that, we're going to head into another race. It's going to be the 100 meter breaststroke for the women's. And we're going to watch Lily King absolutely dominate the field like she always does. Let's take a look right here. There you see her before her race. And, and the one thing that I love about Lily so much is her confidence. She is so calm, cool, and collected behind the block, but also confident. And there you see her heading into that first 50 of the 100. She gets that commanding lead. She has a stroke rate that's almost less than 1.1 per stroke, meaning she is taking a stroke basically every single second. And for those of you that know anything about tempo, that is absolutely absurd. She's she's one of the only swimmers in the world that has a tempo that fast. And I think that's definitely why she's the best breaststroker in the world. And there you see her again, a close up shot. She does like to take peaks to her right when she swims that breaststroke while she breathes, but just another commanding lead. And, and in an event that really is stacked right now for American women. I, I'm telling you right now, I would not want to be a 100 breaststroker as a female right now in the United States just because of the depth that she has. And there she does her Cali Condors cheer right there. But Lily King, another commanding win here at these Pro Swim Series. And it's definitely going to set her up into a very successful summer. Like I just said, it is a very, very deep field but nobody can really count themselves out. And she has Molly Hannis right behind her, Annie Laser, Melanie Margalis. Kathleen Baker has to get a special mention tonight. She was in the B final, but went a 107.9, going a personal best by almost over a second. So although I don't think Kathleen is going to be swimming the Hunter breaststroke at the Olympic trials, it's definitely just, you know, it's showing how deep that field truly is right now. So let's head up into the next race, which is going to be that women's 100 freestyle, the most anticipated race of this night. There you see Simone Manuel. She is the reigning Olympic and world champion and probably one of the most decorated U.S. American sprinters that we will ever see. And she had a very, very hard race tonight against Siobhan Hawhey. Hawhey ended up touching the wall first just ahead of Manuel. But one of these races, too, like the Brescia, it's such a stacked American field. Now, Hahi is from Hong Kong. She trains at Michigan, so she is obviously not going to be competing at those Olympic trials for the United States, but still very good racing experience for Simone to be pushed at this point of the season. And, and I think a lot about of this season is just handling that pressure and, and Simone being under so much pressure being the reigning Olympic champion and always sort of needing to get her hand on the wall first, I do think it's great that she does have a lot of people pushing her in order to get these wins here at these Pro Swim Series, especially in March. And we're at a point in the season where it does matter what you're doing right now, but it also doesn't. There's plenty of time. And there you see Siobhan Hawhey winning um, that 100 freestyle. And we're going to see Siobhan flipping first at that 50 turn. And it sort of stayed just like that for the rest of the race. Simone came home a little bit that last 15 meters. You can see how close they are coming into the wall. But Siobhan getting her hand on the wall first, just ahead of Olympic champion Simone Manuel. And, you know, one of the things that I do want to discuss right now is the difference in training, where a lot of these postgraduate and professional athletes are training at collegiate programs. These collegiate programs are also in a, in a point in their career and their season where they're tapering for their conference meet and NCAAs. Whereas the postgrads, they don't have anything to taper for. So I was talking to a couple of the Texas guys in the lobby of the hotel room this morning, and they were saying how they have seen a little bit of daylight over the past week. They've been a little bit rested coming into this meet because the college team is resting, and that's who they train with. Whereas you have somebody like a Florida or an Allie McHugh training at Wisconsin where they're completely separated and they're not seeing any daylight or rest right now. So that makes swimming in season a lot harder, especially in those harder and longer events. And even for the sprinter ones, too, I mean, I think we look at Nathan Adrian and Caleb Dressel tonight. They're in the B final. They still put up very, very impressive swims, but 
they are a little bit more tired than, say, a Townley Haas or Tate Jackson who are training at Texas right now. So with that, let's head into our last race of the night, which is going to be the women's 400 freestyle. And Katie Ledecky just absolutely dominating this race, going under four minutes. Only three women in the history of swimming have ever gone under the four minute right four minute mark. And Allie McHugh is in that race. We just spoke to her a little bit earlier, but Katie Ledecky just proving that she is back to where she was before Rio. And now we're before Tokyo and she is putting up times that she didn't even put up over the summer at World Championships. And yes, she was sick and hospitalized, but I think it's a great confidence booster for her to come into this meet, knowing that everything that she's doing, all the training that she's doing is paying off. And from that, we are from Tier, we are from Des Moines, Iowa. And after the races, please join us at NBC Sports Network at 7.30 Eastern tomorrow. And we're gonna have Katie Ledecky and Caleb Dressel. And from the entire Deck Press live crew, I'm Elizabeth Beisel saying so long from Des Moines.